today to talk about industrial control systems in critical infrastructure. With me is Patrick Miller, ex-utility, former regulator, now consultant and CEO. How are you today, Patrick? Doing well. Thank you for having me, Gail. I'm glad you could join us. Hey, you know, when this memo hit the wire last week, the first, you know, I looked at it, but the first thing I said was, what is this and what does it mean to me? Can you kind of go into that a little bit? Right. It's a national security memorandum. Uh, and short story is this is uh, an ask from the president to the critical infrastructure sector to secure their industrial control systems. And it's, it's not mandatory. It's not required. Uh, it's a voluntary collaborative initiative, as it's called. Uh, in the memorandum. It's asking the critical infrastructures, and there's basically 16 of these. They're defined within the National Infrastructure Protection Plan. It calls out four of them specifically, electric, uh, gas, uh, water, and chemical. For this initial part, um, the ask from the president is that, you know, we, we're going to start with some what are called voluntary cybersecurity performance goals, okay? And this is going to be a measurement that is are going to be measured against these goals. They're due in about a, a few months. Uh, it's basically September 22nd of this year is the preliminary set of goals, and then the final goals are due by next year. Uh, these goals are going to be created by NIST. It's really just a measurement of security controls, and NIST does this. They create lots of security controls, cybersecurity framework, the NIST 800 series, particularly 53 and 82, it's likely going to be one of those. The, the, the memorandum says you can, you can use existing measurements or create new ones. Uh, so since some good stuff exists, NIST will probably use one of those uh, to set the performance goals. And then the critical infrastructures are being asked to measure themselves against these goals and report back. Okay. So what does it mean like if I'm, like if I'm a utility? What does this mean to me? As a utility, um, the, they call out some specifics they want you to do. The first one is what's called basically detection. It's really more monitoring. And it's so that you've got the capability to know what's in your environment, first of all, like an asset management approach, and then what's happening to those you know, devices on your network, specifically the industrial control system devices. Uh, they want to know that you could tell if something bad was happening, if there was you know, ransomware, malware, or a bad actor in your network. Uh, so think of it like putting in video cameras and you know, someone to watch the camera and the analytics and all of that, but doing this on the network, right? So lots of sensing equipment on the network that looks for bad things happening and then goes back to kind of a security operations center for analysts to look at and then decide if something is bad, bad is happening. And then the next piece is the, what follows after that is obviously incident response and recovery. So if something bad happens, because you're detecting it, uh, then you'd need to respond and do something meaningful from a response perspective means that you can probably keep operating, right? Uh, and then, of course, if for some reason it gets to a state that's really bad and you have to recover, that the recovery time is really short. So they're, they're looking at uh, creating, uh, in a previous executive order, they talked about what's called a cyber NTSB, and it'll likely be an, a, a response framework that you'll need to align with at some point. But so you need to be able to detect, you need to be able to respond and recover. And then of course the last piece is since you're detecting and you're responding that you share this information with the federal government uh, in an information sharing approach. And uh, you know this this in the past has been, you know, we, we share a lot of information, we get some back. Uh, hopefully we're going to get a much more collaborative approach moving forward where there's a lot of good information sharing happening. Uh, we'll see how this all pans out. Again, it's voluntary, and um, I, most industries are still kind of figuring out how much of a lift is this, and we'll see what, what, what they ultimately end up doing in response. But it's, it, it's basically a short story. as an ask of the president to measure yourself against some, some goals for these areas that he's asking. Cool. So when you talk about recovery, that kind of makes me think of pipelines. How does this affect other industries, like other utilities? Right. Oil and gas in particular, um, the electric sector has already gotten pretty far down this path. They're already regulated with NERC SIP. Uh, the NERC SIP standards have been mapped to everything NIST already. Uh, so they can measure themselves fairly quickly in terms of where they are, at least for the utilities that are regulated under NERC SIP. Not all utilities, not all electric utilities are, uh, have things that are bound to NERC SIP. The pipelines, of course, come into mind just because of the recent colonial issues. And uh, the TSA has issued some safety guidelines and also security directives. 
And together they work, you know, basically as something like NERC SIP, but for the gas space, the pipeline space. Um, if you're a pipeline operator, uh, you probably, of course, need to first respond to what the TSA has asked, and then you'll need to map your existing TSA guidelines and directives to whatever NIST produces as this new performance goal framework, whatever that looks like. Uh, so you'll need to perform kind of that control mapping from one set of standards to the other set of standards. And uh, that, that needs to be done also for, for chemical uh, and for water eventually. So those are going to fall into scope as well. Uh, I would say that's probably the first thing you need to get done is um, start by figuring out you know, where, how you're going to measure yourself against these goals, because those are going to be the first questions. But you're going to be measured in those areas, again, of detection, monitoring, and then, of course, response and recovery and information sharing. Very good, very good. So I, I think you've gotten into a lot of this, but I'm still a little fuzzy about, like, specifically, what do I need to do, like, tomorrow? Tomorrow. Great question. So... <laughs> If you're going to respond from this in a, in a voluntary fashion, which you should, the first thing you need to do is figure out what does it look like on your environment? Do you even know everything in your environment, first of all? Do you have an asset inventory? And then once you have that, how do you detect what's happening in that environment? So do you have enough capability to see what's going on? Do you have the technologies to get that, you know, that security information about those devices out of that network and analyzed. Do you have the people with the skill sets to do that so you can effectively detect and monitor? And then, of course, the response and recovery, you know, you should already be good at incident response, and if you're not, you should practice more. <laughs> Start having some incident response exercises. Uh, you need to practice like it's game day because I'm sure anybody, you know, go ask a colonial or anybody else that just got hit, this is something you need to be ready for and ready to respond in a really meaningful way. Uh, not just in a kind of contain the bleeding and stop the damage, but you may even need to recover from scratch in some cases or even go to manual operations. Uh, those are big asks. So, you know, start off by, do I have enough understanding of my environment? Can I get, you know, this, this monitoring out of it and make it useful for me so that I can respond faster and better and even recover better if I need to? So those are, that's a, a lot of, you know, human and technology components in there as well. And of course, the information sharing piece will follow on afterward in terms of what you want to share and what you should be sharing. Okay, so bonus question, how hard is this going to be? It shouldn't be hard because you're already doing lots of good security things, right? <laughs> uh, right. It'll, it'll be less difficult for those that have spent a fair bit of time and uh, they understand their environments. They know what they need to be detecting and they can get rid of some of the false positives and all those challenging things of getting all the technology in place and getting meaningful security information out of that network so that your incident responders aren't just chasing their tails looking at things that are false positive. I would say it's it's not going to be that difficult if you've already spent some time on this. If this is new to you, um, this is likely going to be a heavier lift. I have one last question if you've got the time. You had mentioned September 22nd as a deadline. Does all of this stuff have to be implemented by then or do we just need a plan? Oh, great question. No, no. This is the first set of preliminary goals come out by the 22nd of September. And this isn't so much that um, the infrastructures need to respond by then, it's that NIST and the federal side, uh, primarily NIST and DHS, need to come up with their preliminary goals by then. Very good, well thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today, Patrick. I sure learned a lot. Thanks for having me. You're welcome, take care.